The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the individuals participating in the show. All persons described or mentioned in the podcast should be considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. This podcast contains subject matters such as violence and graphic descriptions along with adult language, which may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. We know more about space than we do our own oceans. Tonight we're going to explore some of the most mysterious and creepy sounds that have ever been recorded in our waters. You're listening to the Mysterious Bruce Podcast. And tonight we bring you the case of Ocean Mystery Sounds. Welcome to a deep, dark, dank, moist basement somewhere in the bowels of Georgia. One take coach is back. Oh, hell. Here we go. <laughs> hey. I mean, once a month ain't bad. No, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, that's that'll get you in the Hall of Fame. That's a 250 average. That's right. Hey, I'm just glad we're not talking about murders and disappearances and s- sexual assaults and pedophilia. Getting on that kick of yours. You just love talking yeah. about boy lovers. I wanted to pour bleach in my eyeballs and inject it in my ears after all that, man. That's just too much. That's too much, Coach. That's just too much. Three parts of it, man. That was awful. It was terrible. But the peoples like it. And that's all yeah. that matters is the peoples like it. Well, good. But, man, it's we need something at least a little more lighthearted. And we got it tonight, boys and girls. We got it tonight. I will say we have had some traction on the feral folk of the Great Smoky Mountains. So maybe bringing you one in our stories. We've got a lot of new listener requests. So we're going to slap them on the old calendar. Really? What were they requesting? Why do you ask questions that you know that I don't have pulled up? Good God. Well, why would you say it if you ain't got it pulled up? Well, I was just trying to tell them and not give it away. I don't know. Yeah, it's like playing cards with my brother's kids or something. Why you got to be like this? <laughs> now I can't even find the thing. You got me all flustered. Oh, there it is. Oh, it was on the top. It was on the top. Well, let me tell you, trying to find, I was Googling fun mysteries. There ain't no Family friendly mysteries. <laughs> there's just not a lot of them. No, there's not. Okay, so. Hold on, I'll tell you what I did do. I don't give a shit. (laughs) (laughs) I said, damn. I'll tell you what I did do is I bought this uh, thing called Unsolved Case Files, where you and your people with you solve an unsolved murder. Really fun. Really interesting. Very well done, too. What'd that set you back there, Coach? Uh, I got it off Amazon. Uh, with our thing is probably about 30 bucks. That ain't too bad. We enjoyed it so much, we went immediately and bought another one and did it. Oh, good. I'm so happy <laughs> for you. But, like, it was so involved. Like, we couldn't, we, we knew what we were, who we thought did it, but we couldn't. You have to prove it to them. Like you get it, they give you a website and you go to it and you got to tell them how you figured it out and what you used. And so we told them, and they was like, no, that ain't it. So we got a hint and it was like, well, have you checked any websites during your investigation? The stuff they gave us had like eight business cards of like suspects and people we talked to. You had to go to like each and every one of their websites to try to find clues there too. It was really cool. That's. I like I mean, how when they kind of, you know, get really invested in it's not a shitty put together situation. So that does. No, it's very well done. Like, I mean, literally they had eight fake websites that we had to go to. <laughs> That's awesome. It was really cool. All right. So the recommendations. Well, shit. Is, of course, Missy Witt. Who's that? Arkansas. Oh, 
They love us in Arkansas, man. That's amazing. There's a new Hulu documentary on her, and I watched the first episode last night. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. It'll leave you speechless there for a little bit. Is that the one in the group chat? Yes. Oh, we're we're gonna start that tonight, actually. Either tonight or tomorrow, depending on. Uh, you can. If you wanted to watch the first one, it's not one of those that you're like, oh, God, i got to watch the next one. So watching the first one kind of sets the stage, and it kind of like wets your whistle about what's about to come up. You also need to understand you better have watched Missing Morgan documentary before you start watching the Missy Whitman. Which one's the Missy Morgan one? Missing – that's Morgan Nick. They did – Hulu did one on it. I think it was three or four parts. And um, Can you give me more homework? Hold yeah, on. It's good. It's good. I'm telling you. What's your name? Morgan Nick. I think it's still missing. Morgan is the name of the documentary. So we got Missy Witt has been requested. Then we also have, oh, where'd it go? Mark Bacotic, Diana Williams. Both of those are in Louisiana. They want another big case. They want our spin on the list. Long Iron Sealer Cure. Oh. They Dude, have you watched the Unsolved Mysteries yet? Yeah, I'm kind of pissed at them, to be honest with you. Why? Because episode one? And five, four or five, whatever the hell the last one was. Mothman? Yeah, that one's been done. They did it on, like, not them, but that, that new wave had been done by a couple of those Discovery Channel shows. Here's my, and, and I told my wife this, here's my gripe, okay? You've taken off, what, two years at, at the minimum? And you're telling me those two episodes, out of all of them that you've been handed, those made the cut? Yeah, Jack the Ripper, I mean. And it was. How is that not, how is it? That one pissed me off. Because I was like, y'all better come up with some groundbreaking shit or I'm, daddy's going to be mad and he'd take his toys somewhere else. All I know is episode two and three are wild. Yes, two and three. Wild. Those are definitely worth the watch. Yes. Uh, Body in the basement and then the, the. Severed head. And the uh, one about the... I, the fourth one's the girl that got killed on stage. Yeah, I like that one because I'm going to tell you something, and here's why I liked it. And for all of you out there that say that we shit on cops, watch that one, and I will tell you, the man at the end of it gets emotional because he that was one of his first cases, and he get he lives across the street from that college. He gets up every morning, and he tells her he's not giving up, and he's retired. And the thing mm-hmm. is, in, during that episode, he also says, look, we had a laundry list of suspects who all passed a polygraph. And I don't put stock in a polygraph for nothing. It's an investigative tool. And I'm like, look, right there, there's the guy. That's the kind of cops that we need more of. They need to be up front. And I'll I get found off, myself agreeing with you there. I'm going to have to get off my soapbox. But anyway. No, it's true. I mean, they, and even other cops involved shouldn't have been involved but they they got involved because they wanted to you right. know they wanted to solve it you know and, and we've lost fight we should not we but like society shits on the police because it's real easy just to bash the bad ones what you don't understand is there's still people out there that take that serve and protect your community they take it to heart and they take every case to heart you know and that's yep. and like the guy that was i think it was the prosecutor for the headless case he said that he doesn't solve every case, but he has a gut feeling that he knows who did it. But this one is bothering him. There's some good people out there. That's just, but I was really impressed with that, that one. That guy got so emotional. And to know that he's still doing things with that other retired female officer. And then you got the security guard or campus police guy. He's still investigating it. So, yeah, I thought those like, you know, the bookends of this season sucked. Yeah, I like the Mothman one, but yeah, it was kind of pointless. Like, the only reason I got mad about the Mothman was because there was th- that whole flap in Chicago happened in the early two thousands, and it's kind of been done before. It's not like this was like a new wave. They didn't even touch on the. They just barely talked about the ones in Chernobyl, and barely yeah. said that they saw one at Fukushima. And I felt like they could have really dove into those because those hadn't been done before. If they if they had come out with a Mothman episode on those two, and then I'd have been like, hey, hey, look at there. We, we're doing something. But 
The newest. All right. So going back with the Great Smoky Mountain unsolved. I don't know if it's unsolved murders or just missing people. This came off of Instagram, and I just wrote the people's name down. It was the case is Trini Gibson and Polly Melton. So I've heard that first name before. I think it, I'm not pulling up because I can't find it. But anyway, so we got that, and then I was trying to think. You jogged my memory about something when you said family-friendly mysteries. Oh, I did retweet on our social media, our X account. Miss Jennifer Bucholtz is wanting a ground source to help with Rebecca Gould's case. While, yes, they did. Crowdsourcing. She's crowdsourcing it. She's awesome, man. She is. They're wanting people that can devote some time. No money involved. Okay, so you're just going to be doing grunt work. (laughs) Like that could be up front, but if you look on our X account, I'll try to repost. Oh, she posted it on our Facebook page too. I'll try to put it on our Instagram and our TikTok and get a little bit more out there. But basically, they're wanting some people to do some investigative work uh, on the old Google machine to help with Rebecca's case. There's some angles that they're looking at, so. If you're interested, go to Jennifer Bucholtz. She's on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of her. Um, she's in our Facebook page as a member. I don't think she's part of the group because she's not a cool kid. But maybe one day. Maybe one day. So that's enough of the beyond be, be, be this. I think we may have a new... We ain't got no new stuff. five-star reviews. I think we got a new pot run. I think. Oh, that's another thing we need to, our patrons are awesome. And I think she put it in the group chat too. We're going to do a top eight cryptids. We're going to do a bracket fight for our 250th episode. We got two new do ones. We, do we need to leave Sasquatch off of it? Oh, well, he's king. Well, that's what I'm saying. He, he I mean, we could go ahead and put him in the championship round, see if anybody can dethrone him. Well, I don't here's know. what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> He gets when like three buys. <laughs> Bigfoot would be the the judge. Yeah, yeah. Of the fight, kind of like we you know uh, those uh, barbecue shows. The people judging are too good to even compete. So yeah, we could just have Bigfoot up there and him be like, eh, I'm, not, "I'm not feeling it." Okay, so we do have two new ones. We got one on the 29th and a neuter one on August the first. I think. Yeah. So we got Trace McClanahan and a Daryline Cossie. I hope I said that right. You, there's no way in three hells you did. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I just phonetically spoke it, so it's probably Darlene or Darlene, and I apologize, Lord. I apologize. You should. Okay, so that takes care of all that. We've aired our darn laundry about that there mysteries. So let's get into it. This is going to be a shorter episode because there's not a whole lot of information about some of these. Some of them, well, that's you, why we talk for twenty minutes. Some of them you uh, you may have heard of because there's a couple that are a little bit famous. But uh, we are talking about ocean mystery sounds tonight, and we're going to lead off with Coach's favorite, the most famous, <laughs> the bloop. Yes, the bloop. Now, the bloop was one of the loudest underwater sounds ever recorded. Hydrophones, which if you don't know what a hydrophone is, it's one of them our underwater microphones. Why don't you just go ahead and play it for the people? Okay, hold on, please. All right, so what you think about that there? What you think? Well, the one thing you gotta you have to know is what you just heard is 16 times the actual speed, so it really goes on long and slow. But to me, that sounds animal. It sounds like an animal. It sounds, sounds like some creature made that sound. But here's the thing: is it was recorded on two different microphones, three thousand miles apart. So whatever it was, it was freaking loud. Yes, and a lot of these that we're going to discuss tonight are sped up. When you look them up, they have been sped up to 16 times. You can find them where they slow them down, and it's some of them are a little bit harder to interpret. But, but even like the bloop 
and the next one that we get into, it's not as bad slow down, but yes, speeding them up really gives you a, a good feeling of what is what we're listening to. Now, like Coach said, these were recorded more than 3,000 miles apart, and they recorded the same exact noise. Now, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration are the ones that are in charge of all of these underwater microphones. There's a couple of arrays that the Navy had put out there that they basically turned over to NOAA and because they had put them out there for the Cold War. But anyway, tit for tat. But basically, now NOAA has all the microphones, the hydrophones in the ocean. A lot of these, I'd say 90% of them happen in the Pacific Ocean, that specific ocean. <laughs> but they they cannot figure out what caused the bloop sound they knew it was something special and it was recorded very close to our next sound on the list well they're gonna say that they're gonna give out some bs explanation that it was a earthquake or ice quake or something like that but I, that doesn't sound that sounds like an animal yes it does now bob diziak the manager of the acoustics program for noah said quote it's unusual when a sound is recorded on all of these sensors we have deployed if it's a ship or a whale when it makes a sound in the ocean it isn't big enough to be recorded all the way across the pacific but this sound was recorded on many hydrophones so it stood out in our mind as being something unique end quote the other thing that's odd about this is it rises rapidly in frequency over approximately a minute. It could be heard up to 3,000 miles away, or for those of you that didn't land on the moon, that's 5,000 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> to put that in perspective... I love that. There's, all, there's two types of country. Those that use the metro and those that have been on the moon. That's right. <laughs> So to put that in perspective, if it originated in the center of the U.S., okay, so if we put this sound in the center of the United States. Where is the center? Is that Kansas? Probably. <laughs> it would be heard at the northern tip of Canada, almost the Ar Arctic Circle, and all the way down to the northern edge of Columbia. That's a lot of distance. That's a, lot, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good distance, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a loud sound there, bub. So, like Coach said, we have the icequake theory, one of the most widely accepted explanations for the bloop is an icequake. According to this theory, the bloop was caused by the cracking of an ice shelf or sea ice. When large masses of ice break apart, they can produce sounds that travel long distances underwater. The sound waves generated by these ice movements can be picked up by hydrophones, and they think that's the bloop. But here's the problem. It would be repeated. True. It's never been heard again. Right. Now, the animal origin hypothesis is one of the most prevalent theories, and that is because most people think, after listening to that, that the bloop was produced by a very large yet undiscovered marine animal. Dude, it'd have to be huge, though. Now, this theory was fueled by the spectrogram of the sound, which resembled that of a living creature. However... Further analysis of the sound waves revealed that they were consistent with similar sounds that come from ice quakes, just not increasing in frequency. I think that's where the ice quake theory has a little bit of merit to it if it didn't increase in frequency as the sound got longer. The other one is somebody said that man made it. It was a result of human activity, such as a military exercise like an underwater explosion or a nuclear detonation. Now, this was debunked because according to our military and any of the world's militaries, there was, there was not any military activities in the area of where the bloop was recorded. Now, this one happened off the southern tip of South America. And it's actually, I actually have some coordinates for the next sound. So the bloop and this next sound that we're going to talk about, the Julia sound, 
is, and I have no idea why it's called the Julia sound. It doesn't sound like someone saying Julia. I don't know, but here, listen to this one and see what you think about this one. So that one is often referred to as the Bloop's cousin. Because, again, it was picked up and heard over a 3,000-mile distance, this time on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. That's a mouthful. Yes, that is. Now, the Julia lasted only 15 seconds. Now, some people claim they heard it for two minutes, but the Equatorial Pacific Ocean only recorded it for 15 seconds. Now, the story of the Julia is it is, I don't, some people have said it's an answer to the bloop. I'm not so sure about that, but. Also, they're saying they, they're communicating with each other. Right. But here's the thing the bloop was recorded, I think, what did I say, 97? I think it was not. I can't recall. I think it was that 97. That was like five minutes ago. I know. But the Julia sound was recorded on May the 1st. I'm sorry, not May the 1st, March the 1st, 1999. Now, again, Noah comes out and says that it was a colossal iceberg that had become lodged against the ice shelf, and it was making crazy sounds. Yeah, the bloop was in 1997. Now, the reason they have been kind of associated with with each other is the sound was so deafening that it reverberated throughout the equatorial Pacific Ocean, that whole array, which again covered up to 3,000 miles. Well, on NOAA's uh, website, they actually put out an article about the bloop on July 16th of this year. Uh oh. Says, what is the bloop? The source of a mysterious rumble recorded in the ocean in 19, 1997 is now known to have originated from an ice quake. That's exactly what somebody covering shit up would say. Yeah. They, <laughs> they said that, you know, like a liar would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now there are a variety of opinions on the source of the bloop and the julia some suggest that the julia is actually a demonic presence lurking in the ocean's unexplored depths others speculated that it can be an unidentified creature that can imitate human sounds now the source of julia sound was initially believed to be a mysterious noise originating from the ocean's depth similar to the bloop and according to this the entire pacific ocean so they have this hydrophone or yeah the hydrophones all throughout the pacific ocean it was heard on every one of them wow it is still being determined whether julia was louder than the bloop or not i swear to god no that's the other one never mind okay <laughs> i thought i had court I thought I had coordinates for the Julia, but I don't. It was another one. Unbelievable. I know. Sorry. I let you down. How coach. unprofessional. All right. So these next four. Yeah. The next four are very uh, mysterious because there's not a lot of information out there. Now, the next one happened after the Julia, actually after the bloop. And it was called the slowdown. And just take a listen to this. Now, that one occurred in May of 1997, and as you can tell, it decreases in frequency, but this thing lasts for approximately seven minutes. Wow. And unlike the other ones, this is a reoccurring sound. It happens three times each year at different times of the year. It's not the same time of the year, but it, it does occur every year three times. Huh. But guess what the running theory is from Noah? Don't say ice quake. Okay, I won't, but uh, it's friction between two ice sheets. <laughs> but if it happens over and over again... You could pinpoint it. I mean... 
wouldn't don't you think they would go investigate? Yeah, they were saying that it's friction between two ice sheets. Then they came back out and said that it was friction between an ice sheet and the actual land of Antarctica. But they leave you with a little nugget of, we can't really be for certain because we can't pinpoint the sound. Even though it happens three times a year, we just don't know when it's coming. Well, and I said investigate. Like, how the hell are they going to investigate, though? It's in the bottom of the ocean. Like, we can't go down there. No. They just call Aquaman. He'd go down there. Yeah, he would. He would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so that one, ladies and gentlemen, that's about all we've got on the slowdown. It is eerie, very eerie. Now they're all scary as hell. Yes, Every I do. Not, I do not want to get back in the ocean after this. Now, no, the, I don't. Ugh. The next, awful. <laughs> the, <laughs> the next one, I do have a pinpoint location for this one, and this one was <laughs> captured. On the U.S. Navy Sosa Array, and it is called the Up Suite. So take a listen to this. Now, that was first heard in 1990, where, 1990, 1990, 1991, and just like the previous slowdown, this one is, can be heard to this day. The upsweep is what it's called, and it's an upsweeping sound that repeats and lasts several minutes and fluctuates based on the seasons. Now, the exact location of this one has been determined to be 54 degrees south and 140 degrees west. But if you plot that into the old Google Earth, it is off the tip of, or I'm sorry, it's the western edge of Argentina, but there's nothing out there. Absolutely nothing but open water. Now, researchers think the sound is a result of volcanic activity, but once again, eh, we're just not really sure about it. Okay, so this one, I will have to say that I I don't hear this one. I just think this is a long, monotone thing. But people think that this actually is its namesake. So before I tell you the name, listen to this one. has been dubbed the whistle. I don't really hear anything. I don't either. It's kind that one's kind of hard and that's sped up 16 times too. Yeah. That didn't really sound like anything to me. When I first listened to it, I was like, why are we even covering this one? Now, researchers at NOAA say that they first discovered it on their array of hydrophones in 97. It has been said that it sounds like a giant giant, a giant creature whistling. I just don't I don't hear the whistling sound. I don't hear anything. Here's the kicker, though. The sound was actually only heard on one hydrophone, which means whatever made that sound had to be close to that specific hydrophone. Hmm. Maybe it was a penguin or something that just got on the micro- got on the phone. It's like happy feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Noah's explanation on this one is it could be caused by an underwater volcano right there on that hydrophone. They just got an answer for everything, don't they? Yeah, they think we're just so damn gullible. Well, let us, let us, you know, let us be, you know, let us think about things. Let us, let us more have wonderment. It's okay if Believe you come in out the and mysteries say, of the world. That's right. It's okay if you come out and go, "Hey, guys, we don't know what the hell this is." Yeah, exactly. Let us morons speculate. And we do love to speculate. Well, there's one thing we like. It's speculation. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one, I do hear this one. And it, even though it is sped up, I do think this one does, the, the namesake of this one does fit. So here we go on this one.
Now, that sound was heard in March of 1997 and is called the train due to its steady frequency that sounds... Come on, ride the train. And ride it. Ooh, ooh, come on, ride the train. I wish they could see you dancing. Oh, my God. You were the whitest dude that's ever lived. There's a bunch, There was a lot of... Uh, when that... That song was very popular. There was a lot of ice beers consumed in my youths. Dude, we, oh, I was a freshman in high school, and somebody, one of the juniors would play that song every single solitary day before football practice. Oh. God, leave it alone. Oh. Now, the train sound was also heard on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, and it was loud enough to be heard across thousands of miles of the pacific but again noah's like hey we've we've used that volcano excuse too many times let's go back (laughs) we're gonna go back to the repertoire of ice sheets in antarctica of course i know sons of bitches (laughs) they think we're gullible i think we're gonna believe that mess hell no no now, it was Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. <laughs> it was. Oh, uh, now. That's what some people think. Well, that's true. Uh, the other one you, is the Kraken. Yeah. If you don't know who Cthulhu is, get you, get you some H.P. Lovecraft and read about it. Don't ask me how to spell that son of a bitch, though. It's a hard word to spell. Yeah. It, it looks like Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that too, probably. All right, boys and girls, that is going to bring us to an end of the odd. There's a lot more sounds out there. There's just even less than what we did on the last three. If if you if you're curious, it's C T H U L H U Cthulhu. Cthulhu. But anyway, so if you're interested in. Strange sounds. There is a plethora of YouTube videos out there that you can peruse at your business, your free time. Well, what do you think it is? We ain't even speculating. We used to have our own theories and shit. Now we just read stuff and go to bed. Well, I'm gonna say the. All right, let's go back through the list. I think the bloop is the bloop and the Julia. I believe was. A creature of some sort. Yeah, but I I do too. But God, the size of it. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, we don't know shit about the ocean. We no, really we don't. don't. We don't. And that's, I mean, there's creatures out there that we have not discovered and probably don't want to. I mean, I'm I, w- I would say the megalodon is out there. Like there was a a shark, thirteen foot shark, maybe eight foot. I can't remember. Big ass shark. Okay, and it had it was tagged. It had a sensor on it. Okay, well the sensor washes up on some beach, and that gets back to the scientist that tagged him, and they track him. And all of a sudden, he went from like twenty, thirty feet below the surface, and all of a sudden he plunged thousands of feet down in like, like a matter quickly. of like a second and a half, too. Yeah, like very quickly plunges down, but his the temperature of his body stayed relatively the same. It's hard to explain, but what it is, is they hypothesized that the only way that what happened was possible, that shark had been eaten. Whole. Whole. Or, at least, or at least the part of him with the tag on it. Oh. Yes, he plummeted that's- in a matter of seconds, and that's... Yeah. Uh, it's it's weird. There was so a, something huge, huge, big enough to eat a full size shark in one bite. Yes, you don't want to mess with that. I think it was a megalodon. I don't. I don't know, man. I don't. I'm like you though. The the fact that those two sounds could be biological scares the shit out of me. The slowdown is even weirder for me because it just it sounds like. I'm just tired. I'm. It's like a yawn. Like, uh. The upsweep, that one's kind of weird. I don't know about that one, but it's increasing. And you would think if, if they really, if scientists thought for real that it was volcanic activity, you would think that it would 
it would stop increasing and you would hear like an explosion. Um, what was the other one? There was the, I think that's it. Oh, no. Okay. I, like I said, the whistle, I, I don't hear that one. I really don't. But that was one of the more famous ones. If you research mystery ocean sounds, the train sound, that's kind of freaky. I mean, they're all freaky, except the whistle. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's just water. That's just somebody passing gas. That's just going by that hydrophone and said, watch this, boys. Well, the good news is I have uh, knocked the dust off, and I'm back in the trenches trying to stomp out ignorance, but uh, I got weak ankles. <laughs> I have learned that. Um, it's my I've dipped my toe in the middle school realm, and let me tell you, Wow, there! Uh, I've been teaching freshmen for a while, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Jury's still out. Like, how about that? Jury's still out. Well, boys and girls, uh, that brings us to the end of this little light-hearted episode because we just didn't want to do any more murder and nastiness. So there just you go. couldn't. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm-mm. We had to do something. I really did look for like funny mysteries or. You know, something very lighthearted, but there's just not a lot of funny mysteries. Now, <laughs> I did send somebody, that, a big fan of the show, Mr. Hartline, about the, the wild camels out in Texas. Oh, that's very lighthearted. Yeah. Cannibals? Not cannibals, camels. You know, them things with humps on them. Now, the, that is a pretty funny story. They supposedly... They are still, there's still some out there in the deserts in uh, western Texas, southwest. So, but anyway, if you are not a member of our great Facebook group chat, you need to become a member. Also, we are going to get back on the old post brew hangover and discuss the cases. We just needed a break from. The boys on the tracks and the, the Johnny Gosh case. So, yeah, just I mean, we're really starting to get into more murders and stuff. But we got to get away from it. We got to get back to disappearances. Yes, right. I do say we could probably Johnny make Johnny Gosh was a disappearance, but still, we need to get non-pedophilic disappearances. Yes, Amy. <laughs> yes, I do not want to ever look at that shit again. No, not at all. All right, Coach, you got any recommendations for, I? you know. I do. I just started watching uh, a new show that I hadn't ever heard of before. Hold on one second. Well, while he's doing that, I will tell you that I have like a triple play. You can either do the Unsolved Mysteries, episode two, three, or four. Two especially. The At Wits End on Hulu. That's a good one. That's a new one about. That disappearance in Arkansas, and then uh, still missing Morgan. That is a good one, also. Well, I'm going to recommend a show. Speaking of vanishings and stuff, it's called Never Seen Again. I think it's on Amazon Prime for free. I know it's on Paramount Plus for free because that's where I'm watching it. What's it called? Never Seen Again. Huh. There's five seasons. They did one on Granger Taylor interviewed the, the the man that was his friend and his family. But, you know, remember Granger when he had that, like, seven, eight-year-old kid that became friends with him? They interviewed him. That's good stuff, man. I'm going to have to look at that when we get off our hair, if my pen will work. I recommend it. Since I gave it as my recommendation, I certainly recommend it. I was going to say, I, I, God, I'd hope so. God, I'd hope so. All right, Coach, you got anything else for everybody out there? You know I don't. Uh, Deuces.